I uh, repeat the same, that Pastor Madi is not with us today. Uh, we have prayed for him because he traveled to South Sudan. He went uh, and he got there safely. And we are grateful to God because of that. Uh, my wife was not feeling very well in the morning, but she was supposed to be joining us later. I think uh, maybe, I don't know whether she's still on the way. Um, but we'll get to know. Um, I'm also feeling a bit tired and sleepy. I slept at 4. <laughs> slept at 4 a.m. And uh, the last, the other night I had slept at 3.30. Uh, and the other one I had slept at three. <laughs> uh, but I'm well. Yes, Damaris, you look like you are having my, you are pitying me. I'm well, it's just that some things have to be done. I've had quite a lot to, um, to chew. Uh, with regard to uh, work, of course, and some of the commitments I had. I had a very tight deadline to beat yesterday. Actually, I spent the whole day in the house, but I never woke up at any point. Um, I just had to do it. Anyway, uh, that is besides the point. We are getting towards the very end and the climax of our annual theme. And that has been Inuka, Tear Down, Build Up. Uh, for those who are visiting with us for the first time, you're welcome. It's a blessing to have you fellowshipping with us. Indeed, this is Grace Hill Mission Church where God does what? Writes beautiful stories and we thank you for being part of that story that God is writing. Uh, I see Esther is here after a very long time. Uh, the prodigal <laughs> has showed up. Okay, so we continue. So Pastor Matthew started us off. Uh, as I mentioned, we are climaxing by you know introducing us to the series behold the architect and uh, even then we are looking at his work within the home and our theme or our main verse was psalm 127 which we are going to read and we are asking ourselves who is building for you so we are looking at the architect and at the same time we are asking who is building for you, your house, or your home. And maybe you can give us Psalm 127 now. Uh, let me hope we will now have a stable voice. Psalm 127 will be good. And uh, let's have it at the back of our mind that we are asking, who is building for you? Who is building on your behalf? Or who is the builder behind the builder? Yes, you may be doing the actual work of taking one stone and placing it on the other but who is doing that work behind you? I think all along we have been saying that there is a builder behind the builder. So unless the Lord builds the house, why don't we read the same together publicly? One, two, go. Unless the Lord builds the house it's builders labor in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, you, those who watch stay awake in vain. In vain you rise up. Oh, please. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat, for he grants sleep to those he loves. Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are the sons born in one's youth. Blessed is the man whose quiver is full of them. They shall, will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. Now, this psalm has two portions that are blended into one, although many times we tend to separate them. Most of the time we read Psalm 127 verse 1 and 2 separately from 3 and 5. But if you are to look at it slowly, you realize that it is actually a progression. 
At this particular point, the psalmist is singing and saying that the person who builds is the Lord. And he actually says, unless the Lord builds. So the builder is the Lord, and unless he does it, then whatever we will be doing is in vain. Notice that in verse 1 and 2, the word vain, which means futile and nothing, is repeated three times. So unless build, the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain those who build it. And unless the Lord guards a city, those who guard stay, you know, stay awake in vain. And verse 2 also says, it is in vain that you rise up early or sit up late to eat the bread of sorrows, for he gives uh, sleep to those he loves. In other versions, possibly, uh, you know, the, the current trend is to translate it as, he gives to those he loves even when they are asleep. So, you could wake up early, <laughs> you could sleep late, <laughs> and after I've just said that I've slept least the last three days, you could sleep late, but unless it is the Lord who is building for you, then that labor and that toil is in vain. So three times that vain is repeated. So it is a progression then of the building of the house, but then it comes to now the children with regard to who then inhabit that house. So it is just a continuation and it says, see, behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. So it is still the same part of the continuation, but now it focuses on children and particularly parenting. So what we'll be discussing today is how can we then allow the Lord to lead us in the process of parenting. We are talking about the children today and how we parent and how we allow the Lord to build our house in the context of raising children. So the fruit of the womb is a reward. Then it continues to say that like arrows in the hands of a warrior are the children of one youth. They'll not be ashamed. If you find yourself speaking with your enemies at the gate, you will not be ashamed. Now, that has reference to two or three possible things. Number one, when you think of gates, gates were legal. It was almost like the courts. Think of gates like the courts. Now, a gate would be, if you think about the gate of Jeru gates of Jerusalem, the gates of the village, these would be strategic places. Yes, many times they had the gates, yes, but there were strategic places where councils uh, would meet or the wazes of the days would meet and they would meet possibly to chart the way for the village or for the city or for the community at the same time if there were legal disputes they would be sorted there so these were places of authority these were places of legal determination so think of it like a parliament or think of it like a court so in, in case this one man then has a hostile enemy at these strategic places, the multitude of sons or the multitude of children is able to help him while answer on his behalf. And also, even if there is somebody who wants to challenge them in terms of hostility, he knows that he has many sons. Even by a physical assessment, they are able to protect him. At the same time, you are also to think about it as your own gate or somebody's own gate and there is an enemy on the outside and somebody has sons who are standing before him like arrows uh, you know or after he or behind him like arrows that person is sure that is not just a threat i mean that person is himself a threat to any threat that may want to come so this has to be seen uh in both lights and then it says that the person shall not be ashamed literally if a warrior has arrows and enough arrows his quiver being full of arrows and there is an enemy who sees that this person has a bow and he has enough arrows to fight then that person cannot be intimidated by an enemy because you know if i was to attack this particular person chances are they could just take an arrow and they could you know they could attack me so of course we are using old testament language if it was today if the bible was written today it would be said that children are like bullets praise the name of the lord and happy is the man who has his gun full of those bullets. That, that is technically uh, what it would say. And of course, if I have a gun and I have enough bullets, then my enemies would have to reconsider before 
they choose to attack me. So that is just to contextualize the same. But what do we therefore see? We see that unless the Lord builds, the Lord is the builder and we must rely on him. So if you are talking about building generations after generations, after we are talking about raising children and parenting, then we must rely on the builder. The Lord is the builder that we must rely on. He is not given as an option. He is given as a requirement that unless it is not if you can kind of consider the way that the Lord builds children and parenting, it is not a suggestion, but it is given as a requirement. Unless the Lord, unless we rely on the Lord to build, then we'll be building in vain. When it also comes to parenting, because today we are focusing on parenting, it is the Lord who watches. It is the Lord who watches over the children. It is the Lord who watches over our generations. Now, unless we trust him to watch, all our watching would be in vain. Now, if you have passed by the Kahawa barracks along, um, what is it called? The superhighway. <coughs> Look towards the left, just past the gate you'll see like a small watchtower that is green and I think it's possibly metallic. That is like a stall structure uh, whereby you'll find two or three soldiers you know, uh, placed at strategic locations and they are scanning the area. They are watching to see whether there is any potential enemy. So unless the Lord watches, the context of watching is once again in those gates, they would have strategic people to stand on watchtowers. And a watchtower would be even higher than the gate and higher than the wall itself in a way that these people could see danger from afar and warn or inform the people who are found within the city or within the community. So just like we see at the Kahawa barracks, if, if they are able to see an enemy from far, definitely they will raise a ram and when the enemy comes, the whole camp is prepared, is prepared for battle, is prepared to handle whatever may come. But see, unless it is the Lord who is doing that watching for you, unless it is the Lord who is watching out, any effort that you may make to try and watch will be in vain. The truth is, there is no amount of caution that you can have that will guarantee that your child will turn out right. You can put in as many boundaries as you want and it is not bad. See, it is good for us to watch but we must know that in our watching we must rely on God. Praise the name of the Lord. You can stand at the highest tower or the highest mountain. But unless the Lord watches for you, unless it is the Lord who hurts them, they will turn out the way they will turn out. Praise the name of the Lord. So we must rely on the Lord. We must rely on the, on the Lord. Then he is the one who comes our anxiety, our uncertainties and pressures. You are raising children. In, in, actually in the same, same way, even with family. Unless it is the Lord who is standing guard. The truth is, there is no effort that you can do uh, to safeguard your family. It is God who watches. It is God who watches. So, he comes on that. He says that it is in vain. That that vein comes in. It is in vain for you to wake up early and sleep late. It is, an, it is in vain for you to eat the bread of sorrows. All those uncertainties, the pressures, all those. He actually says, I am the one building, I am the one watching, leave them to me. Even when we sleep, he says he gives sleep to his beloved. And I've said an alternative translation for that is even when his people are sleeping, he gives them, he provides for them to the praise of his glory. Mark 4, 26 to 28, the Bible says, and he said, this is Jesus, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise day uh, and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow he himself does not know how so jesus gave a parable and said that the kingdom of god is like that man or like, like let's call that person a farmer he's like that farmer who goes and scatters seed so yes there is the effort of scattering the seed there is the effort of planting but after planting the only thing that the farmer can do is say, well, let me trust the Lord that they will germinate. Jesus said, the seed, should, the seed sprouts up, but the seed sprout up and grow, but the farmer himself does not know how that
that happens. So when you think about parenting, make the right investment, invest the right time, invest the right resources, show the right way, but at the end of the day, we must rely on the one who builds because we do not know how it will actually turn out to be. Praise the name of the Lord. We do not know how it will actually turn out to be. So we must always ask the Lord, Lord, please help us. Now, once again, it is good to repeat that this is categorized as what is called a sum of ascents. Somewhere from around Psalm 121, for about 15 psalms, they are called psalms of ascent. As they would ascend to Zion, and Mount Zion, by the way, Mount Zion is not even a mountain. Zion is like a, is a, is a, is a, is a hill. But well, for in biblical language, it is called a mountain. When they would ascend, and when they would ascend the steps of the temple. Here then, they would focus. As they were ascending to God, there are themes that come out from this. Number one is family and brotherhood. You realize 127 speaks about family and children. Uh, 128 also speaks about wife and children. Later on in 133, it also says that brethren, if brethren live together in unity. So they are actually right near the place of their pilgrimage. Remember, these people have come from very far. But as they are arriving to the place, they have come in for months, others for days, others for weeks, and others for hours who lived around. They would take some time to sing these songs and sing these psalms reflectively. So this particular psalm reflects on the family and the continuity of posterity, particularly when it comes to children. One may wonder why they chose to do so, but it is because God's focus on building is what we call transgenerational. It moves from one generation to the other. In other words, what they are asking themselves or what they are reflecting as they sing this song is, have I come with my sons? Have I come with my children? Have I invested in them whatever I need to invest? Am I doing the right? Am I trusting the Lord to build my children? Have I brought them along? Number one. But number two, am I trusting the Lord to build them? Notice they would do this as families. This ascent was not done by individuals. They would all come as families based on family trees and family lineage, uh, in lineages and ascend to the presence of the Lord. And all that would be for the reason that God expected them that the parents and the fathers would impact their children in a way that whatever God had taught the fathers would still be taught. That is why God is very, very keen to say, set this as a memorial for you and your children. And you will always tell the children this and this and this and this. So at this particular point, the Jewish worship and Jewish culture was very family oriented. In fact, by the way, if you are to read that in Hebrew, it would read sons as Ben, children as Ben. B-E-N. Now, Ben, Ben is the word for son. So in other words, we could say, I think it's just because we want to be gender correct, because it applies to everybody, sons are like quivers in the hands of a mighty warrior. And the reason why that is used so is because, as I said, the Hebrew word for son is ben. However, it is also the same word for stone. Are we together? The stones that build a house. One stone, one stone is called ben. And a son and is called Ben. That's why, for example, you can hear uh, if you are to call Jesus, we would call him Jesus Ben Yosef or Yeshua Ben Yosef. Jesus, come on, you see the way we used to say Osama bin Laden. Osama bin Laden, son of, son of. Bin is son of. So that is Arabic, but for Hebrew it is Ben. Like we would say Arab. Arab. Arab Moi, Arab Moi, son of. Praise the name of the Lord. <clears throat> so, the idea here is that the sons and the children would continue to build the name of the father and of the parents, but not only that, they would build the name and the reputation of the Lord in continuity. So, God then, in this context and with this kind of an illustration, has given us a chance and He has given us children so that we cannot only build our legacy in their lives, 
but also build the legacy of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. When we raise our children in the way of the Lord, and they raise their children in the way of the Lord, and that cycle continues, ultimately, the name of the Lord will never be extant from the world. But then we must see that, yes, there is a role that we play, but there is also a role that the Lord plays. That is the whole point of verse 1 and 2. Now we come to verse 3, all the way to 5. The Bible says that children are a blessing from the Lord. And indeed, the fruit of the womb is a reward. So God's, God views children as number one, a heritage, and as a reward. As a reward, as a good thing that he has given you. As a heritage, as something that has been purposefully allocated for you. You know, a heritage is almost like an inheritance. This is specifically for you. It's like God has set apart that child or those children and given them specifically to you as your heritage, as your reward. But there is a responsibility that is implied then that when you are given an inheritance or a heritage, you must be a faithful steward. Praise the name of the Lord. When a parent is leaving inheritance to their children, they expect them to be stewards. For example, from the community where I come from, they say uh, that you cannot sell, or you should not sell ancestral land. Why? Because they expect that whatever was handed over to you, you will hand it over as a good steward, so that at one point, it will never be lacking. Yes, it may reduce. Yes, you may distribute it among many, but that particular piece of land still remains. Pretty much the same, same thing that we see in the Bible. Land was never supposed to be sold for good. And even if somebody took a loan and was unable to pay, up about the seventh year and the fiftieth year of Jubilee, land needed to be restored. It could either be redeemed by a family man or at the expiration of the time, it would be willingly restored by the person who had held it as ransom. So God sees these people, these little ones that he has entrusted to us as a blessing, as a heritage, as a reward. Recently, my wife mentioned uh, something about how there is a current debate on how people do not want to get children. And she said of how ladies are saying that, you know, not every woman is meant to be a mother. You know, not every woman is cut out. Not every woman is cut out for motherhood. Some of us are just meant to, you know, to, to be there. Of course, that is just selfishness because uh, you don't want to hear a baby cry. You don't change that. It's just selfishness and self-centeredness. And when she said that, I didn't respond, but of course she was saying what people say. But the response in my mind was, I wish your mother. If somebody was to tell me that I am not cut out for motherhood, I wish your mother said she was not, not cut out for motherhood. Because then he would not even exist. Praise the name of the Lord. By the eyes and the estimate of God, children are a blessing and a reward. However then, we must know <coughs> that while we raise them up, we are building, but there is an architect behind the building. What then do we see? We see that parenting is for both. Now see, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. <coughs> Blessed is the man who has his quiver full of them. Implied in those three sentences is motherhood, the womb is mentioned but also the man and the warrior and the quiver is also mentioned such that this has to be done by both parents. Praise the name of the Lord. By God's design it is prudent. It is the best way by God's design to raise a child by both parents. I consider myself an, an underprivileged. I don't know whether I can say, no, not marginalized but underprivileged because I was not raised up by my two parents, even though I knew them. Because when I was in class one, early, early, many, many years, they, they, they you know, they, they split. Of course, I saw quite, quite, quite a lot of things that I was supposed to, to see, you know, even at my age. I saw violence. I saw, I saw bad examples, literally, uh, in almost every way. And I have always looked and thought, I wish, I wish my father was a bit more present than he was. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why today, for example, 
I still battle with regard to why I even changed my name. Because my birth name, or Kim said what he was called, my birth name is actually Godfrey Nyingi. Godfrey Nyingi Gashunia. <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. So Gashunia is my dad. But you look at my records, you cannot see Nyingi, you cannot see Gashunia. So you will find Godfrey Kingori Modoni. Why so? Because, and by the way, nobody told me to do that. In class one, or possibly class two there, I chose to cover all my books, and I wrote Paul Kingori Mudoni. Now, Kingori is, Mudoni is my mom, Kingori is her father, but he's called Paul Kingori. So one day, just in bitterness, because I was very, very angry, as I told you, I saw things I should not have seen, uh, you know, with regard to how, how my father would, would, would act sometimes. And uh, also violence and what have you. One time, one time I... Okay. <laughs> anyway, when I was young, and my mom and father were living together. I was there hoping anytime we had a visitor that the visitor would not go. Because by whatever means, I never wanted to see them quarrel. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, we had our fourth anniversary a few days ago. And my wife mentioned something and said, I... I was telling her, you have really tried to live with this man. And she said, this man who keeps quiet when we disagree. Because I made a resolve within my heart that I will not raise a voice. Because I saw my father doing it. Praise the name of the Lord. So that I would rather keep quiet or walk away. Or just ignore that such is not happening. Because I do not want to tempt myself to raise my voice against her. By whatever reason. Praise the Lord. So one time I still remember vividly my father holding me uh, over a drum of water. And telling my mom, if you don't come, and they, it was a violent episode, if you don't come, I will throw him in the, in the water uh, and in the tank. And I was very, very young. One time. <clears throat> Possibly you ask why Ethan does not have a Kikuyu name. He's Ethan Fadili by design. And if anybody wants to give him a Kikuyu name, call him Kingori Ataitika. The name of the Lord. That we will have to make an agreement with him that he, he, sh he should not feel intimidated by not having a Kikuyu name. <coughs> One time after they had already separated... Uh, now at least I can speak because my father is no longer alive so I don't feel like I'm dishonoring him. I don't speak this in public anywhere. Uh, my father came, passed by. They were separated. I was there. It was after school. I was playing with the boys. I was in the boys club then. My mother, I don't know where she was. My sister, I don't know where she was. And you know those days in the village you napiki enje. So alikuwa meacha ugali. Na ugali ya kitambo haiku inaiva haraka. So you had to give it time and wait for it to, <laughs> to really cook. You can actually go and do other businesses. So he came very, very drunk. And he chose to relieve himself on the ugali. For a short call. And thankfully there was somebody who saw. So as a result of that, I got so resentful. And I was very young. I was in class one. I got so resentful, I hated that man with every cell and every atom of my being. Bitterness, bitterness, bitterness crept in. The Lord tried causing me to get rid of it. I couldn't. Thankfully, because we related with my wife for many years, among the many years when we were in campus, when we were relating, she is the one who helped me to get rid of that and to get rid of the bitterness and to reach out to my father. And the first time I did that, because I knew him, I knew he loved me, he was always coming. I had his number, but I had called it by a different name. I had not saved it that. 
Now, what happened? We were in high school. We read a set book called An Enemy of the People. Praise the name of the Lord. One of the characters that I didn't like very much was called Hofstad. Now, those who did the enemy of the people, you will agree with me. So I had saved him Hofstad. <laughs> and now I am in campus, second year. Nilimalizana set bukitambo, nimekash. I finished in 2010. This is now 2013. And the man is still half studied in my phone. So one evening, I chose to change him as dad. By there, I still have his number, though he passed on. Still dad. And I told him, I love you, dad. And when I went home, I reached out to him. We became very, 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 very good friends and very good buddies. And sadly, when he died, I still mourn him to date. I, I still feel I wish he lived a little bit longer for me to love him better for me to, to be with a father for longer. As a result of that then, there were things then that I, that I had to teach myself because then I had nobody to show me. Praise the name of the Lord. And I remember on the day we, we got married, one of the greatest uncertainties I had was how does a husband live with a wife? I have not seen one. I remember even telling my wife, you know, I have not been fathered very well. But this is it. But I'm still going to give my best food forward. So it is for both parents. Praise the name of the Lord. It is not for one side. So obviously my mom did a good job. I think so. But I wish there was a man. Not a man. But I wish my father was there. Sorry. Nimuashtua. As a result of that, by the way, I always find, I always feel like a pain in the heart when somebody says, I the children of single mothers turn out bad. In a new manga to the core, I, wait, wait, you cannot just say that. Okay, possibly statistics show that, but you have to realize that some of us also turn out well. And some of us are in the meeting where you are saying that. And we never chose to be brought by single parents. Praise the name of the Lord. So I, I really, really don't like it. Anyway, as arrows in the hand of a warrior, so are children of one's youth. Youth then, given in the context of that this man, this man needs to give birth to their children and raise them from when they are young so that they can have ample time from the time they are young to raise their children and prepare them for life. So, this is not envisioned as like a child of the old age where you do not have enough time. So the context or, or, or you know, the principle of sending, spending ample time with the children is given here. That happy or, or you know, like children in the hands of a warrior are like those ones who are born in a man's youth. Why? Because the man is still young. He has many years ahead of them. And in these many years, they can prepare the children to take their place. They can prepare the children for life. Praise the name of the Lord. So, time then, the concept of spending time with the children is given here. And of course, an arrow that is well prepared and an arrow that is well shot has the capacity to cover a long range of distance where the warrior himself cannot go. So, if a warrior wants to shoot at Steve, for example, or somebody who is behind uh, the structure where our brother uh, Daniel and our sister uh, Antonia live. If they want to shoot, an arrow will go there first. An arrow will st still do the work. So it has the ability to go there faster and also possibly where a warrior cannot go. If a warrior goes to the enemy, they may not be safe. But if they shoot an arrow from a distance, they may be safe. But nonetheless, we can tie this all to that a warrior must do their job in, number one, preparing an arrow, select, selecting an arrow, and shooting an arrow. But at the end of the day, the success of parenting depends on God. Praise the name of the Lord. So it is the warrior who makes the arrow or buys the arrow. It is the warrior who says, 
this is the arrow that I want to use, this particular one. It is the warrior who places on the ball. It is the warrior who knows when to release and releases. But at the end of the day, God is the one upon whom every success is built. If the Lord does not parent for you, if the Lord does not help you, you are wasting your effort. Pretty much because by our nature, by human nature, we are limited. Both we and our children are fallen. Both we and our children are rebellious. Praise the name of the Lord. So any effort that we do, we do it in our fallenness. We do it in our limitations. We do it in our shortcomings. Unless the Lord helps us. Unless the Lord helps us. This reminds me of the advert, Yadeto. You know, that paranoid mommy and deto mommy and whatever. So no matter how paranoid you'll be, mutoto atanguka tu kama anaanguka. But leave that to God. Any measure that you put in praise, the measures are good, but we must be careful not to trust on the measures. If we trust on our measures alone, your labor can only cause you to sweat. And after some time, sweat becomes smelly. Praise the name of the Lord. So you'll actually find that you are undoing everything that you wanted to do. In other words, could we keep the Lord at the center of our parenting? We cannot do it alone. We have to rely on him. In this case, we have to do what we must, but we have to be debtor mummies, knowing that it is the Lord who is behind us. Think about the arrow and we will be done. <coughs> An arrow, every arrow, at least in the context of the Bible, starts as a stick. A tree that is rough. I mean, it has to be taken, it has to be crafted, it has to be polished. At the end of the day, by the time a warrior throws or you know throws an arrow, that arrow has to be straightened, has to be balanced, has to be sharpened. It has to be worked on. So what then is the role of the parent as the warrior or in the context of raising arrows? Number one is that there has to be patient straightening and shaping. Patient straightening and shaping. As I said, the arrow starts as a crooked tree. And I mentioned that because of sin, we are fallen by our nature. Children are also bo born fallen by their nature. They are born in sin. And so, by that, you'll find that they will be crooked from the very, very beginning. Where I come from, we also say that we have five vowels, but Kikui children, and possibly all children, learn O as the first vowel. They don't even know the A. I, E, or U. So, O. When you tell them to do something, they say O. Give me something, they say O. Chukua yo kitu O. Pea hui O. The response is O, O, O. Rebellion. Praise the name of the Lord. It is inbuilt within us. And that is why you see, even when they grow up, they still want to rebel. They want to have their own language that their parents cannot understand. Nowadays, I even hear Sheng is no longer Sheng. Now we have another one. That even us, we cannot even understand it anyway. Praise the name of the Lord. By nature, that, that, that should be the same. So we must then take our time to patiently craft them. To patiently straighten and balance them. To patiently make sure that every crooked place is chopped off. So we must then teach ourselves to help them make the right decisions. It does not have to be beating and disciplining them all the time. But you can tell them no to something that they do. But it's also good so that they make the right decision the other time. If they can reason with you, you tell them no. But you also tell them why are you telling them the no. Praise the name of the Lord. Because we have two ways that we can, we can straighten and shape our children. Number one, on the virtue of the authority that we have as, as parents. The fact is, even if Ethan wanted to beat me, he can't. I can kick him. Take care. I am stronger than him. I have more authority than him. I can force it. But one time, he will grow up and he will no longer be the small boy. At that time, will I still force that authority on them? No. I have to train them from the time they are young. I tell them, no, 
and this is the reason why. So we reason together. Come, let us reason together. So that when they are growing, and now I cannot kick him, or I cannot hit or discipline him, he will still have the why behind the actions. So it will become easier for them to make the decision. So the warrior does not pick any arrow, as I mentioned. He picks only that which is well prepared and fit for purpose. Number two, the warrior has to be patient. There is patient and adjusted smoothing. So we have straightened and we have shaped it. But we also have to use some sandpaper to now smoothen some of the rough edges. Some of those two character development issues. Some of those personality issues. Some of those finer details that may make up a person with regard to who the person is. The finer details. So we have to smoothen them. We have to teach them at times how do you you know, how do you respect other people? Courtesy, we have to smoothen them. May not be in discipline, but courtesy has to be there. I remember when, uh, when I was younger, it was a rule that you can never sit when an adult is standing, just as a matter of pure courtesy. Praise the name of the Lord. The finer details. At times we have to tell them how do you even eat. Thank you for Sunday school for teaching our children how to use a fork and a knife when they are eating. But at times we have to teach them even how to chew so that then they do not become a, you know, they do not become what? A bother to people when they are chewing like this. The finer details. The sandpapering. Praise the name of the Lord. We have to be firm on it. Proverbs 22.15 the Bible says foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. But the Lord of discipline will drive it far from him. Second Timothy 3, 1-2 to The Bible says, But know this, in the last day perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. So we have to be patient and we have to smooth out that which is not godly within them. And the Bible promises us a hard time that in the last days, people will be disobedient to parents. That foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. Foolishness too, but discipline takes it out, drives it out. A child by nature are foolish. To every, 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 every ex. That's why they do things and you wonder, what are you thinking? Na Number three, intentional sharpening. An arrow <coughs> has three main parts. It has the shaft or the rod. That is the main stick. The front tip has the tip, right? The sharpened tip that actually does the piercing. But at the back, what is there? Some feathers. Some fins for balance. Now, unless the arrow has those three parts, and actually that tip is designed in a way that it will lie properly on the string that pulls it back. That pulls it back. So unless those four elements are properly crafted and properly designed, that arrow, if it is not sharpened, it will strike the target, but it may not cause the impact. In fact, if it is too blunt, you know that it will not be streamlined to cast through the air. It may not even get to the place. If the shaft itself is crooked or bent, that arrow can never go straight. If it looks like this, there is even a possibility that you will shoot it and it will come back at you and actually shoot you if it, is not, if it is not straight, if it is crooked. If it has no balance, and we'll see all that, will be done shortly. If it is not properly balanced, then it will not be well equipped to handle the wind and the current. So we must make sure that we sharpen our children properly. How do we do that? We equip them. We educate them. And sharpening requires that you spend time to see this needs to be sharpened. I can improve your skill here. I see that you have a talent here. How can I sharpen it as a parent? So that then you will be sharp enough and right to the point so that when I throw you, when you are thrown, you will do what you are supposed to do. You see that this person has a talent here. My child is gifted in this area. Sharpen that. You see that my child can study in this kind of a way. Sharpen that. Educate them. 
but that requires quality time. But one of the things that you also must know is you do not sharpen three arrows at a time. There is the reference to individual investment of time. Damaris has three children. Has to be sharpened individually. Because the children are different. Milka has four. They have to be sharpened individually. You don't sharpen three at the same time. You sharpen and you make sure it is sharp enough then you sharpen the other. Learn to spend quality time sharpening them, identifying what is this that really makes you happy? What is this thing that breaks your heart? What are these things that you like and how can I improve them as a parent? So the parents then will need to invest themselves, their time, their emotion. At the end of the day, the child needs to feel that the parent is interested in their staff. On Friday, I, as I said, I had a long weekend in terms of commitment. So I was working late also on Friday. And at some point, I chose to post everything I was doing and I went on the floor and began playing with Fadili. And we played for quite some time. We crowed there. We laughed. We, we screamed. We did whatever we could do as, a, you know, as just having fun. When I thought that it was time for me now to go back to my work, I went, sat down and took my laptop. He came crying. And pulling me, he does not want me to get to that laptop again because he knows when I get to it, I spend too much time. So he was pulling me back. I kept it aside, I went. And that happened for like three or four times. Anytime I would sit to take a laptop, he would come get my leg as he was crying, trying to pull me that he wanted to spend that time. He wanted to feel that I am actually interested in the games he was playing, in the things that he was doing. So sharpening. Individual, sharpening. Praise the name of the Lord. But after you sharpen, you must also balance. As I said, the feathers at the back give it balance and ability to move through the winds and withstand the, car, the, the, you know, the current. This, in, this involves the measures that we put in place to make sure that our children turn out all right. These are the disciplines we put in. We say that here, this is how you do, this is how you relate with people. You come to the house at this time. These are the measures that we put in and the ground rules that we must lay in place to make sure that the person has boundaries that keep them safe. Praise the name of the Lord. Otherwise, when the wind comes, they could be going at a high speed, but when the wind current changes, they will be swayed. They will not be able to withstand. So we must teach them discipline. We must teach them boundaries. We must teach them how to balance themselves across board. And by that I also mean, by balance I also mean we must also help them grow holistically. Luke 2 52, our favorite Sunday school verse in the PCEA church when I was there. And Jesus grew in stature, in wisdom, in favor with God, and in favor with man. Balance to withstand current. We must help our children grow in those four areas of life. In stature, they have to grow health-wise. They have to have a healthy diet. Praise the name of the Lord. We have to make sure that when they are sick, we take care of them. We have to make sure that the water they drink is clean. So we have to take care of their parental well-being. They need to sleep early, even when their fathers are not sleeping early. But their fathers should also sleep early. <laughs> yes, they need to sleep early. They, you know, they need to exercise. So physically... We must allow them to, we must train them, advance them that way. But also, they must grow in wisdom. Intellectually, we must invest in their intellectual capacity. The training, the self-development tools, academics. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why after this, Pastor Faith will come and ask all of you to take insur education insur insurance for your children. <laughs> <clears throat> after that there is favor with God we must balance them by helping them grow spiritually model them family devotion teach them the ways of the Lord invest in the word of the Lord but also we must help them to balance themselves socially praise the name of the Lord socially at some point uh things changed and while many of us grew communally, many of us grew 
when you are in you can go anywhere at any time wewe ukitoka shule fanya maneno yako as long as whatever work you are given is okay you can come back later <laughs> even for supper you just go play football as long as we have an idea where you are but nowadays people have grown very very antisocial praise the name of the lord and we are raising children who are academic giants spiritual giants and healthy but when they go to the social place they become misfits the feathers at the back of the arrows are supposed to bring balance praise the name of the lord and how do we balance invest in their stature and physical growth invest in their intellectual growth invest in their spiritual work a growth invest in their social growth that could mean having a social grouping around you with other children that can also allow your children to be part of a controlled and happy and healthy environment while you protect them once again from whatever may come <laughs> lastly aiming it is the work of the warrior to aim praise the lord an arrow will never shoot itself a properly an aimed arrow will never go to the target it is the parent who sees where really do i aim this person and of course to aim you must allow the huge not huge the main architect to help you aim it is the lord who knows the purpose that he has for your child it is the lord who knows what he intends for your baby or your boy or your girl son and daughter so invest in listening to the lord to know what really is this child supposed to become and once you know that be strategic in aiming praise the name of the lord if you aim them correctly they'll get to the destination and that will be the parental backing that they need possibly that could that could possibly be the difference between a successful person and an unsuccessful person if the parents did their homework well and aim them properly <coughs> it would be bigger what is god's purpose for your arrow you have to apply the tension you have to do this you have to do the, the discipline as you aim you're also pulling the arrow back at times you may have to kaza kamba kidogo but when you release the more you kaza kamba the more potential you are increasing even in simple science we were taught of potential energy and kinetic energy when you pull you have potential energy the more you pull the more the energy increases it has potential to do more the more investment you make in that child the more you are aiming the bigger the ability and the bigger the speed you are giving to your child when you release they are able to go further what is god's purpose for you are <coughs> to tie it up an arrow cannot go without having a bow that strains it the bigger or the heavier and the stronger the bow the farther an arrow will go the energy that throws that arrow is found within the bend now think of an arrow a bow as the part that bends and then the string that you pull the energy is not even in the string that is just for the tension to allow the energy in the bow to work that is where all the energy and the effort is found if you have a stronger and a better bow it takes the arrow farther if it is not good uh if it does not do its homework well then the arrow will not go far so think of it therefore this way the child is the arrow the parent is the bow but god is the archer praise the name of the lord the parent is the arrow no sorry the child is the arrow that must be thrust and thrown but the bow that contains the energy to throw this the capacity the potential energy to propel the arrow is the bow and that is the parent only thing that we need to do is to surrender the bow and the arrow both of them both the bow and the arrow must be surrendered to god because god is the archer who throws the arrow and when he throws he never misses at that point then we can say that parenting like discipleship 
I was telling some people that discipleship is like parenting. Simple, but not easy. Simple, but very difficult. Simple, but very challenging. Pretty much because if Ethan has pooped himself, I just need to change a diaper. But when he was younger, there are times he would need a diaper change three times in a night, and you have to wake up. It is simple, just change the diaper, but it is not easy. When hungry, feed them, but you have to feed them possibly three times. Usiku amuke, not easy, but we have to invest. However, there is help. Psalm 127, therefore, is an assurance that we are not the ones who build. We are not the ones who raise these children up. It is God who does the same. And see what he is assuring. Unless the Lord builds, unless the Lord protects, and it is in vain for you to wake up to provide, because it is God who provides for you even when you are asleep. God promises to take care of these, these three things. He builds, he protects, and he provides. Do you have any other bigger need that does not fall in that category? Building, he builds the life, the home, the family, the house. But after building, he does not keep it empty. He provides whatever is needed and he also protects. Praise the name of the Lord. God is assuring us in Psalm 127. Unless the Lord builds, unless the Lord watches to protect and it is in vain for you to wake up early and sleep it because it is the Lord who provide. He not only builds the house, but he provides and gives protection. Who is building for you? Just like the arrow has the ability to get to a far target at the design and at the will of the archer. Well parented children can or have the ability to go far than you can ever reach. Praise the name of the Lord. They have the capacity to continue your legacy and your name and your influence to generations and societies to come. Our role, therefore, is to make sure that we prepare them and we release them enough and properly enough so that they can be able to stand their ground always. And not only that, but also successfully pass through life. If you read 128, the next one, it now speaks about children but in the course of grandchildren, meaning that the archer has done a good job. The bow has done a good job. And now, grandchildren are also enjoying the same. So, we have been called by God for a task that will always outlive us. It is a task that is bigger than ourselves. It will live beyond you because your child will live beyond you. Their child will definitely live, live beyond you. And their children children will live beyond you. So, it is a task that will outlive us. But it is in vain. It is futile. It is nothing if we will only depend on our strategies and our own means and formulas. Only God can do it for us. Only God can help us parent. Colossians 3.17 Whatever you do, do it. Do it what? All to the name of the Lord. And through Jesus Christ, of course. And whatever you find your hearts to do, do it with all your hearts as unto the Lord. When you parent, parent with all your heart as unto the Lord. He has entrusted you with that child. Give us the last one. Second Timothy 1 and 12. And that's where we end. Second Timothy chapter 1 verse 12. And we read together number one, two, go. This is why I am suffering as I am. Yet I am not ashamed because I know whom I have believed. And I'm convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him for that day. My favorite NKGV says, I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed to him until that day. We are parenting, but only God is able to keep that which we entrust to him. The call therefore is, let us do all that we must do, but remember to entrust our children to the Lord. Being persuaded and being convinced, being persuaded, I have believed and I am persuaded 
that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Being persuaded that he is able to keep the children that I have committed to him until the final day. Praise the name of the Lord. Why don't we rise up and say a prayer? Remember to entrust your children to the Lord. He only can take care of them. He only can bring them out victoriously. Father, we thank you for calling us back to examining parenting. Even as we focus on the message of the season, that you are the architect who follows us home. And today, you are following us to make sure that we are raising our children right. Lord, how we pray that you will help us in every decision we make, in every choice that we make on behalf of our children, that that may be informed by you. Also help us to do everything that is necessary for their well-being and for their balancing, even as we sharpen them and as we raise them up to excel physically and in health, as we raise them up to excel socially and spiritually and intellectually. But also, Father, help us to remember that we cannot trust our ploys and our techniques and strategies and our programs. But Lord, we can only trust in you. And that is why today here on behalf of all the parents of Grace Hill Mission Church Northlands, we stand as one in one accord, asking you, Lord, to be the parent behind the parent. To be the archer who holds both the bow and the arrow and makes sure that that arrow goes to the destination where it is supposed to reach. Even then we have confidence as we have read in the last portion of scripture that we have just looked at. That we are persuaded and fully convinced that you who have, we have believed in are able to keep and to guard and to hem in and to protect and to contain and to safeguard and to secure our children even as we entrust them to you. Thank you Lord for giving us the gift to be parents. And for those of us who are not parents yet, we know that you still give us that chance and that responsibility to be. Lord, all that we ask is that you may help us not to do it on our own, but we trust you in full assurance, in full conviction that only you are able to do it. Only you are able to keep and secure them. We entrust and commend all our children, born and unborn to you, and our journey and efforts in parenting to you. Asking you, Lord, to give us victory and to give them victory that outlives them. The Lord God, for generations to come, even when we have exited the saints, your name will always be continued because you have helped us impact the right parenting to our children who will do the same, who will do the same to others who will do the same. We thank you and we honor you in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we give you thanks. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious to you and give you peace. The Lord bless you so much. See you on Thursday or Wednesday. Hey, see you on Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday for prayer. Hey, and Sunday. So Wednesday we have a service here. The weekly fellowship and service in the evening. Thursday is virtual. We have Bible study. On Saturday, we have our monthly prayer on the third Saturday of every month. And on Sunday, we gather here again for fellowship.